everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Good Life Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Blakely, and I am pleased to be joined today by Jessica Krauss and Kim Hines from Lost Way Brewery here in Florida. So ladies, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get to know you two a little bit more. Um, what books are you reading or listening to right now? Quick books. Quick books. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> So just kind of talk about your journey um, to get here, I guess, and, and just the journey from last way to vision to reality and just kind of take us through what that was like. All right. Well, you want to hit up on how we got here? Sure. Um, so my husband was at a startup company in Michigan. Um, it was like a medical device, and they just kind of like really ran out of money to be able to keep him on. Um, so we ended up just kind of looking for other jobs. He didn't really want to end up on either of the coasts of the United States because weren't his picks. Um, so he got an interview here, almost dead center, the United States, total opposite of the coast. Um, and he just, he seemed to really like it. There was a few other opportunities, um, but this one just kind of stuck mainly because, you know, healthcare, day one, why not? Sure. And we just had a little girl. So um, we decided to move here, which is me, him, our little girl, came here. And he loved it, and I pretty much fell in love with this little city. And yeah. It's definitely crazy when you move from a big like city to like this little town, um, and you can go to the grocery store and see people like every day that you know. And it's just like you gotta get dressed, okay? <laughs> you know, I remember you actually told me one time you're like, I don't think I've ever ran into anybody I know in a grocery store. Okay, never in her entire life. Really? Yeah, like, until I moved here, and it's every single. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish you were from Detroit, based south uh, of Detroit. North, 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 north of Detroit, Detroit area. Okay. Um, I had like over seven, 700 kids in my graduating class. So, wow. yeah. Um, and then Jason was more used to this little town kind okay. of atmosphere. And so he was fine with it because he liked to be back and something like that. Um, and then it was, we were here for a few months, and my brother, I asked him what he wanted for his birthday. He's like, a new job because they just had a and they wanted to get out of there. Was it, it was just a few months after that, right? Yeah, she was only three months old when we moved here. Yeah, and so I was like, well, apply at BB, get a new job. And he did, <laughs> and you can take over. <laughs> so from the time that he applied, um, it was two weeks after that um, interview that he was offered the job. We bought a house sight unseen. They actually went and looked at the house for us. Yes. We bought a house sight unseen. And we moved from East LA to Holbrook, Nebraska. Wow. Yeah. Um, on purpose. Because <laughs> like, everybody was like, wait, you're going to Nebraska? And I'm like, yeah. They're like, on purpose? Like, yes, we're, we're purposely making this choice for our family. So um, we moved here, and honestly, none of us really looked back. Like, it's 
been great to live here. So, um, and then that kind of turned into the beautiful building that we're sitting in today. Um, my husband's, he's homebrewed pretty much the entire time that we've been together. And, um, he actually got Jason in, into homebrewing and Jason was a strictly bush light drinker. Oh my gosh, our wedding photos. They're Bush chugging Bush Light. Well, well we did have Heineken at our wedding. First class. Yes. First class. <laughs> so, um, Mark turned Jason into homebrewing, and they both just like found this passion for it, and they're both really good at it. And um, when we moved here, they started homebrewing more together. And you know, when we were in Michigan, there's breweries everywhere. When you're in East LA, like there's breweries everywhere. And so when we moved here, Mark's like, this would be a really great town for a brewery. Like there's the closest brewery is Thunderhead and um, Axtell. And at that time they didn't even have their tap room open. It was just the production brewery. So you had to go to Kearney for a craft beer. Yeah. And so um, we're driving around one day after church, I think. And we found this building, which is actually just the next block over. And it was for sale by owner. And I told them, I'm like, that would be a really great tap room. That'd be a really great brewery. You should, you should look at it. And he says, no, it's Sunday afternoon. Like they're not gonna want to come. And and we, had, this was probably the second time we had already driven by this brewery, saying, or driven by this building, saying the same thing. And finally, I just grabbed my phone and I dialed the number. And he was like, I'm not gonna call them. And I'm like, well, you better figure out something to say because the phone's ringing. <laughs> and pretty much like him. And <laughs> He's like, oh, hi, I was interested in, you know, in this building. She goes, I'll be there in two minutes. And she showed up like, like so fast. And we walked in and like automatically just like the vision started happening. Like I could picture everything in that building and I knew exactly where I wanted things to go. And we went over to Kim and Jason's house after that. And we said, like, what do you guys think about starting a brewery together? Like, <laughs> Let's do this. And we, I think we stayed up all night drinking beer that night. And like, I'm pretty sure it's our home brewery. Yeah. And we stayed up just like planning, like, well, this is what we would want. Um, this is what would be really cool. Let's do this and this and that. And, you know, and we just really started brainstorming from there. And it hasn't stopped. Like, we still have our brainstorm sessions and we're four years in now. And so that would have been in 2015 when you were looking at the building? Yeah. Yeah. For 2016? Yeah, 2015. Olivia was still in a car seat. Like, a reverse rear facing car seat there. She was a little still. But yeah. Yeah. And since then, you know, I have my parents, my sister, her parents, and her sister living here. Yeah. Kind of with them all. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes. Got a good reason to be here. Now, so the building you were looking at, though, isn't the building we're in. No. No, no, no. no. So, luckily, that building is. We look at it now and we're like, gosh, that building was so small. Like, imagine trying to like fit everything that we have in here in that tiny building. So uh, we search for a while. There's quite a few vacant buildings here at Holbridge, so we toured a lot of them. We had um, we worked with Heritage Realty Agency, which is a, another small little realtor here, and um, we looked at. four or five other buildings and then we ultimately just thought like let's just go buy a piece of land and build something brand sure. new because we're not gonna find what we need. And I had I was I was a little stubborn on this and they probably got sick of it but I was like no we need to be downtown like we need to be in the city well, we, need, we need to like be in the community. Yeah. And so um, we put out an article with PCDC our development corporation here in town and Said that we were looking for a building and it we didn't want it to have a basement just because we wanted it to be structurally sound sure. and uh, i think it was the next day that it got published this guy calls us and he goes hey we i've got a building that's for sale um it, we haven't listed it or anything but it's kind of a piece um <laughs> why don't you come and look at it and so we're like yeah cool let's get it done and so we came and looked at this building and um, she wasn't lying. It was absolutely a piece. Um, I remember walking in this front door and there was no electricity, no heat, and it was in the cooler months, well, what, oh, like it was. November, it was like, somewhere around there. Um, and I walked 
walked in and it was late at night and there was just garbage all over the floor, like the ceiling tiles um, had fallen through. Yeah, the insulation had fallen through from like the holes in the ceiling and stuff. And I'm like climbing over these like mountains of insulation and ceiling tiles and our volunteer sirens come off in town, which I don't know if anybody's familiar with the way that the volunteer sirens sound, but it was very much like a Resident Evil episode. Yeah. And if there was ever going to be a time in my life where a zombie child was going to come out and murder me, it was going to be right then. Right. Yeah. Luckily, I'm not a zombie. And <laughs> we got to buy the building, but it was an absolute peace. And uh, it was, it's was it been a fun ride. <laughs> well, it looks amazing in here now. And, but I got to see pictures. You guys showed me pictures uh, when I first got here. There was a ton of work that went into this. Mm -hmm. A ton of work. So, but you guys have done a great job. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, we got to do that. A lot of our aggression in that demo phase. <laughs> yes, we were very pregnant at that point. Yeah. <laughs> there I wouldn't let her do very much. She could go like two steps up the ladder. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> so you purchased the building in February of 16. Mm -hmm. and uh, February of 17. February, February of 17. 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then so you opened in November? Yes. November yes, the same November sixteenth, uh, two thousand seventeen. We opened our tap room. Got it. Yeah. Be four years this year. Yeah, we're celebrating four years in November this year. So. Very cool. Yeah, very exciting. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. So, um, I guess, what is your favorite part of being a small business owner for the first four years? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I think for me, it's being able to impact a community. Um, obviously, we love serving beer. We love being able to do that for the community, but it's so much more. Like, we've done fundraisers for um, preschools, like our community preschools. We've sponsored our um, like high school volleyball teams. Mm -hmm. We've given back to families and done fundraisers for those like, to cover things like funeral expenses or put up memorials and stuff like that. That's great. Um, so being able to make that difference, I think, is probably my favorite part and meeting all these new people and making those connections. Sure. That's that's wonderful. Yeah. What about you? Just really all of it. Like the fact that I have a key to this building just kind of shocks me almost every time. Yeah. You know, like it's holy crap, we have a business. Yeah. I mean honestly it's kind of terrifying too. There's a COVID. Like it's just like oh, oh crap, we have a business. <laughs> Well, and if you handle the financial side of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I quit books. <laughs> you every day. Yes, yes. Um, but no, just like she said, though, like, the, we love the community and they love us. So, like, I think that's honestly been the biggest part. Like, I mean, I don't know what we do without them, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Was that part of it where the community aspect, was that something that just kind of naturally came to be where maybe you didn't get into it with that? That wasn't your main focus, but it has come to be something that you really enjoy. Um, just kind of a, a natural, I can't think of the right word, but just a natural byproduct of opening your businesses and get to be part of the community that you really started to enjoy. I think so. I, I like to say like, starting a business isn't easy in any way, shape or form. And especially in a bigger city where you have to kind of have, where you have more competition, you have to work harder to get people in your door. We're lucky enough to be in a small community where we, I mean, yes, it's still something we strive to do and like it is a hard time doing, um, but for the most part, people want to come out and support you as well. Sure. And then that just kind of transitions slowly into like starting to participate more in like a business after hours mm -hmm. or lunch and learns that like the community nonprofits would host. And, then we kind of get into it with other businesses or organizations and then just kind of start forming and building stuff from there. So um, I think we all serve on boards now. Jason was on city council. Um, my husband helped with the Veterans Memorial that's going on. I was really involved in the chamber and now Kimberly is. We're heavily involved in Rotary. And so I think, well, because of this, you know, we were able to kind of just branch out more and be a bigger part of the community. Sure. So it's been awesome. I mean, I think it's all—it's always been like I, 
you think I would um, memorize our mission statement, but it has a lot to do yeah. with like, you know, showing people what craft beer is, being mm -hmm. a family, mm -hmm. you know, just being there. Family for friendly environment, yeah. and educational, yeah. educational yeah. and Mark's gonna kill us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on our Facebook page, I think. Yeah. So yeah. check that out. <laughs> So did anybody have any experience owning a business before you started this and were your husbands? No, no. Um, I would say kind of you and Mark. Kind, kind of, of only because my dad, he owned his own business for okay. basically our entire lives. Yeah. Um, and I think we just kind of got that, you know, work stamina, like, you know, you gotta work for what you want. Um, and basically that's what we've been doing. And she had no idea who I was. Right. 
and it was like that's awesome like yeah. that is such an incredible feeling yeah. and I think that was probably like my moment like holy shit we're business owners yeah it was yeah yeah it was really cool I still think about it picture it in my head once in a while yeah <laughs> very cool yeah that's awesome um so you mentioned it before let's talk about the pandemic a little bit so you guys have been open for not quite three years probably two and a half years almost when, four no well, I'm saying before the oh before the pandemic yeah, yeah sorry when yeah. the pandemic hit yeah. so you've been open for a while just talk about how the pandemic affected um, your business um different ways that you maybe had to pivot and do things different and then also talk about if there was something that you thought about implementing before the pandemic hit, where you were able to finally take a step back and say, okay, we want to do this, whether it's remodeling or uh, offering a new product or something like that. Just kind of talk about what that six months was like for your business. Yeah. Um, well, first, I'm scared because we ended up, we all got together. So I want to say, it wasn't before Mark had come back for a little bit. Or was it before Mark we had a conversation back. about what we needed to do. Yeah. If, what did we need to do as a business, as part of the community? Um, and we ended up coming to the decision that we needed to close our doors. <clears throat> and so, like, honestly, it was terrifying. But what we did is we ended up, I mean, we still did off-site sales. And there was some, I don't know if it was like a clause or something, but apparently we were, are allowed to deliver beer to other houses. Not businesses, houses. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we actually kind of started that up. We have our own little Osway van. Um, and so we would deliver beers. Um, we could do offsite sales. Our, our POS is through Arrived and they are amazing. Like when COVID hit, they like stepped it up. They got like a mobile app ordering. So we didn't have to touch oh, anything. Like people could literally yeah. pull up outside, start mm -hmm. an app on, or uh, start a tab on their phone. And it would show up on ours. <clears throat> They'd call us and be like, I want this, this, or email us and say, I want this, this on my tab for pickup at this time. And yeah. we would get the little receipt pop up here. And yeah, it was, it was yeah. awesome. It was, I, I guess they've been working on trying to get that going, but when that happened, it was just like, we need to get it now. Yeah. They stepped up, it was amazing. Um, let's see. So we kept basically just doing offsite sales to get growlers. We weren't break, we weren't collecting growlers, like we weren't taking them back to people, we weren't taking them back and clean them. At that point, we weren't. Um, so basically, that's just what we did. We ended up having to, I guess, lay off our part time employees for a little bit, and all of us owners had to step back a bit and just kind of work through that. Did you yeah. have full time and part time employees? No, just we, we, only, we just have part time yeah. employees, yeah. Um, but we, they still wanted to work during yeah, the pandemic, so absolutely, we brought them in. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, nobody, nobody uh, who opens a tap room has in their business plan to have their door shut yes. and only do curbside and delivery. Yeah. You know, um, so that was hard to kind of navigate through. But like, our employees helped out a ton, kind of just like making suggestions. And then and when I say they were laid off, they were probably laid off for like a month. <laughs> and then we brought them back as soon as we could. Yeah. yeah. And that month that we had laid them off was, um, we still paid them their hourly wages and um, their hours that they were scheduled because, I mean, nobody was expecting this to happen. So sure. we can't just be like, oh, sorry. Um, so we still did that. But in that month, we were all just kind of figuring out, like, okay, let's work through this together. Let's figure out the direction that we're going to go in next. And figure out how to set up our our team to kind of help figure this out. And so in that month we were working on the best way to do deliveries and how to get those packed up and ready to go. And do we do delivery times? Do we do just like set delivery hours? Like, like you know, how we, far out? Yeah, we how far out are we gonna go? Are we delivering yeah. every 30 minutes, you know? Um, what does it look like with just the demand that we have doing curbside and, and you know whatever so it was a lot of kind of figuring those things out before we were like okay now let's get everybody back in this is the new way that we're operating and um, I think I, I mean I hope they were appreciative of that just so that way they were kind of like thrown into a mess and, right. um, 
it's very similar to like when we opened, we didn't have employees for the first year. It was the four of us working the tap room doing the brewing. Yeah, yeah, just just the four of us, and we we don't we thought of it as a we we don't know what we're doing yet. Yeah. So we don't want to hire anybody sure. else yeah. for them to come in and not know what they're doing yet. Right. And um, and so we were like, okay, we need time to get confident in what we're doing. We need time to build our leadership and build our processes and have you know all of these things in place before we even consider hiring somebody sure. else. And so once we did that, you know, we were able to bring them in and we still learned a lot having employees, but and we still are, um, but I don't know, I feel like. I think out of COVID, I honestly, that's when we started bottling, we decided to start bottling. Yeah, we started bottling. So that's something we always yeah. did um, mm -hmm. on the professional releases. Mm -hmm. um, and we've talked about doing a crawling machine forever. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we finally just hit the bullet, hit the bullet, yeah, 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 and bullet. just got it finally, mm -hmm. like within the last couple of months. Yeah. And then we Just in case it happens, happens again. <laughs> <laughs> we also got the refrigerator. Yes, we got the refrigerator. So the refrigerator was something that came out of COVID too. Um, PCDC did some type of, oh, they did a gift card match. Yes. And so we were able to use that money from the gift card match that our, you know people had um, bought gift cards online and we used that match to buy the refrigerator. And so we thought, be easier so that way our um, our team's not having to go all the way to the back fridge to grab sure. a bottle for somebody you know and, and we're like when we open back up it'll look really cool so yeah. so that was probably one thing and then yeah bottling crowlers now we're able to have kombucha in there from first street um just kind of display these a little bit better sure. and stuff so i think all those things came out of COVID. people still have the app on, on their phones oh, too yeah. so they people still, still open tabs on their phone and are we still doing delivery? Um, we're not doing delivery anymore. We kept it up after we opened our doors for probably about another month or so. We just didn't see the demand in it. Yeah. And so we're like, well, you know, it's going to very easily get missed if this person decides sure. to order delivery on this day. And, you know, we weren't prepared for it because we haven't had a delivery in two weeks. So let's right. just go ahead. Kind of we we yeah. still randomly yeah. get online orders, though. We do. And thankfully, we get emails because so otherwise it's like, yeah. <laughs> Or a special tab on the POS desk to say online orders, but sometimes you don't see them. Yeah. When you're busy, it's like, yeah. oh, hey, did you see that? No, okay, that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got an online order. Just want to make sure you saw that. But you probably saw people wanting to get back in here. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. after having the away. Yeah. What was it? It was the first, first or second day we opened the doors for people. And I cried. I couldn't even come in. It was yeah. just like, ah. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Happy tears. I do, I do remember and that. People looked at me like, why are you coming in? Because I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. I'm like, are you crying? Yeah. She's like, there's people in her tongue. I'm like, I know. It's fine. <laughs> so how long have we closed? A couple months? So it's been three months. Three months? Yeah, because we closed before it was mandated to be closed. Yeah. Okay. And so I think, yeah, three months we were closed altogether. But yeah, that was rough. Did you close beginning of March, probably? I think so. Because I think it was pretty much mandated around mid-March. Yeah, yeah. mid-March was mandated, so yeah, yeah. close early March. How was the community support? It was great. We still have food trucks come out, too, so that was really cool. So um, we encouraged them to come in, place their order, and then while they waited for their food, we'd fill their order, and then we'd take it out to them. And so we had a lot of that going on, too. <laughs> that was really nice to to be able to kind of bring back a little sense of normalcy. I mean, you couldn't come in and eat your food and drink sure. your beer like normal, but you could still get your food to go and get your beer to go and enjoy it safely at home. So, Absolutely. yeah, I think that was, it was appreciated by the community. Yeah. Again, so, yeah. Talk a little bit about the roles that you all have within the business. Has it, has it changed? Uh, you know, like Kim, have you always ran books? Well, it, goes along with our meeting in the basement. Um, it was, it's almost like, so my brother and I aren't like the closest. He's a little older than me. Well, let's be fair. You weren't the closest. You're pretty close now. I said we weren't. Oh, I thought, I we thought you said we hot dogs. We <laughs> <So, like, laughs> sure. so we weren't the closest really ever <laughs> until he met Jessica. And Jessica and I like really hit it off. Um, and then like we just kind of got a lot closer. And then when I told him, you know, get an interview and move here, it just kind of gets closer and closer. Um, we were in the basement. It's almost like this was just like meant to be. Yeah. Like I have a degree in accounting. I love numbers. Um, so.
so like of course I'm gonna be the CFO. Like yeah. that just that she has man, kind of like management experience. She's worked she's worked, you know, at restaurants and bars and stuff like that and she's so much better than people than me. I don't usually like talking because I don't do this. Um, so obviously she's our general manager. Yeah. Um, like she said, Mark was he's just like Mark. He's Mark. So he, he just overruled all this. Um, and, <laughs> and then there's my husband, who's an engineer. Um, he does, I, he does his engineering stuff. <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm so bad. I'm you're so fine. Bad us. You're fine. No, but he's just like he's our chief operations. Yeah. Like he knows what needs to be done, how it needs to be done. He knows like the science about making everything. He will literally sit there and read books about it, or just like search things up on his phone. Like he's. He's just, he's so smart. I seriously don't know what he thinks about um, And like in his beard. In, yes, he right. stores it all in his beard. Is it that where it is? Yes, that's where all his smarts so is. Well, yeah. Except for that one time we cut it off. Well, we had to. We made, we made enough money. We had a bet, yeah. <laughs> we raised enough money for Jason to yeah, shave his beard. Yeah, so. Um, so, like, and so that's what he does. He's like, you know, our C, C -O -O. C -O -O. Yeah. yeah, so Jason's always been. Operations type of role where he's yes. set up, you know, processes. He's um, dealt with the FDA and all of these other government organizations. And I know medical device and uh, beer brewing are not on the same boat in any way, shape, or form. But you still have to deal with these government agencies. And so Jason's always been all about like protocol and process and um, all of like the rule things. Yes. Um, You're so much better. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark's always been like the hey, you like and I always say it, I love that man. I mean I chased him to the middle of Nebraska, so oh, yeah. obviously um, but I call him Mr. Rules. He is he's very much Mr. Rules. He's very much um, hey he said you were gonna do this. He holds everybody accountable very much so. so and he does the same thing for himself too, you know, I I respect him for being able to say like I didn't do this and that was my bad but we all need to do this mm -hmm. and so I think that um, all four of us having those strengths in those areas have really been able to allow all four of us to just literally come together and straight up mesh yeah. and uh, so yeah it's been like that since we started yeah since we started that's I mean we'll kind of help out in different areas like I said Kim and Jason and Mark they all worked tavern when we first opened yeah. so they all, you know, serve beers and mop floors and wash dishes. Like they all do those things. Um, like most small business owners have. To do yeah, that. exactly. They and make sure the toilet paper stops. Exactly, yes. exactly. You know, and so, oh, that's a party. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get good toilet paper. The <laughs> like cheap toilet paper. <laughs> but I, I like what you say, and you know. Especially when you've got when it's just more than just a sole owner of mm -hmm. a business, um, that accountability has to be there. Mm -hmm. But I think when you throw in a family dynamic, it just makes it, so it, like you guys came together, but it could have went the other way too. Yeah. Like there yeah. could have been friction, and mm -hmm. I'm yeah, sure that it does. There's no friction, I'm <laughs> sure. And it's but, but you can't. I don't think you can run a business, especially with more than one owner, without some friction. But that's mm -hmm. ultimately those challenges are what make you strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. But having that accountability is really important, even if it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and while you guys may not like it in the moment, you appreciate overall yeah. what it brings to the business. Oh, there's been plenty of times where I've been like, oh, that asshole, or you know, whatever. And then, like, You're so sweet. the next day, I didn't say what I was talking about. <laughs> and then oh, the next day, I'm like, oh, they're right. Like, damn it, they were right. Okay. Yeah, once you think about it. Yeah, like, suck up, let's get it together. And I think that's just how all of us are. Like. We're all stubborn. Yeah, we're all stubborn. Yeah. And we all like doing things our way. Um, and I think we've all grown a lot and kind of learned to listen to each other and learned how to talk to each other. And I mean, we're still here. We're still all brother and sister and husband mm -hmm. and wife. And <laughs> our kids go to the same school and we still have like family functions and mm -hmm. stuff. So. You know, it could have very well gone the other way, but 
And we do. We work in the back too. Yeah. Like we, yeah. We that's, done, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, we've done all that too. Yeah. So, I mean, we all we all have our stuff that we are good at, and that's mm -hmm. what we stick to. Mm -hmm. But we also help like all of them, not just tap room. We work in the back. I wash kegs and mm -hmm. we brew beer and. But you don't want anybody touching the books. I printed a check for you <laughs> once. She does. She's on the phone the whole time. I printed a check for you once. Yes. I would help you reconcile bank accounts and you stuff. Did, yeah. So you know, we all yeah, we all help each other out. Yeah, yeah, we all help each other out for sure. Kim, talk about though. I think the financial side of it, especially if you were doing it on your own, it's and there's people that just do not like to deal with their financial aspect. They want to they want to run the business. Okay. <laughs> All the money in the world. That's very much me. Let's <laughs> talk about how important it is to have a handle on the books and the finances. And even if it's not you doing it, if you have to delegate that to someone, just talk about the importance of that with the small so, business. So it's like, like we've said, we've been open for almost four years now. Um, and I think I'm just starting to realize like I'm not going to do it all on my own. Um, but it's... It's a tough one working with the finances because you've got your other owners that want you want this and want this and want sure. that. And half the time I say yes because I don't want to be the bad accountant that nobody likes. Um, but I really started to realize I need to say no. Like uh, we can't do that right now. We we got to do this or we have these things or we really wanted to get the back fixed because we had um, sewer not sewer issues but the the back area where we park our van was just. It was a wreck, so we finally yeah. had to we saved up some money and I was like, we're gonna do this and it needs to get done. Like I'm tired of it. Um, and so like I mean it's definitely a struggle trying to decide where can we spend our money, where can't we spend our money, what do we need to make more money? Sure. Um, and that's also the other part of it is I'm the one looking at the numbers saying, Hey, we need this or this, like we need to figure out how do we do this and either I get uh, everything's fine, like okay. <laughs> or you know, like Oh, we can do it, it's fine. But I think we're all finally really starting to work together and I'm really starting to learn to say no. Um, it's just numbers, I love them to death, but I hate them to death. Yeah. It's, it's just one of those things, like, you, got, you gotta know what you're doing. Um, I, have a, I have a CPA that looks at it every year. And, um, she says I'm doing fine, so that's cool. <laughs> she said it looks great. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did the but, pandemic make those conversations harder or easier when it came to things that we need to do versus money that we have to do on it? I honestly feel like this year has been the best year. Yeah. In like, trying to decide what we need to do and mm -hmm. when we need to do it. Um, uh, there's been discussion like, do we really need to get that right now? Um, and I think that's the thing. And we actually, like, as much as I hate COVID, I feel like our conversations have been more in depth. We've discussed things before we actually go out and do it anymore. You know, like it's just, it's not like a, we're gonna do this right now. Okay, let's buy it. Yep, done. Yeah. You know, like we discuss it. Mm -hmm. um, like a crawler machine, we had, we discussed that for years, and I think we finally had an actual sit down conversation. This is what we're gonna do. Yeah. And like, this is what we can expect. Yeah. This is what it's going to cost. This yeah. is going to be maintenance, all this other stuff. Yes. Like, we had time to like sit down and figure all of those things out before we just like bought it. Like, because we bought the refrigerator and we're like, cool, what are we going to put inside of it? Yeah, like, 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 we need to buy more stuff to put inside <laughs> the fridge. That's right. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, but, like, I'm going to start, like, holding, you know, all the other owners more accountable. Like, they're going to start budgeting their own stuff. So, uh, get ready for it. Uh, so. yeah, it used to just Great. be like, yeah, I used to have some numbers. She already like, told, yeah. told me. Yeah, I did. Me. I did. This um, was their first notice. <laughs> <laughs> it used to just be like, hey, can I buy these? <laughs> I'd buy it and she'd be like, what did you buy? I'm like, you said I could buy it. Yeah. So, so <laughs> you didn't tell me how many we're buying. I'm like, oh, sorry. Uh, also, we have a hundred hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's important to, uh, I think it's important to have a handle on the finances, especially when something, the pandemic, that no one saw coming, no one could plan for, no one knew what was going to happen. There's going to be things that happen that you have no idea oh, yeah. what's around. Yeah. And so, that, I, it just, I know that there's business owners that don't want to deal with it, but we just got to. But we were prepared. I, Mark was, like you said, like Mr. Rules, like, Process like we just, yeah, we need to have the, we need to start saving, you know, we need to have, we can't have less than this.
this in our account at all times. And I'm like, okay. And so I would always put money in our savings and thank God for that because, yeah. you know, I don't know where we be. Like, just, I just don't. Yeah. If I kept saying yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And every small business can use processes in their savings. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it takes time. It's not fun to do. But it doesn't matter what business it is. It only makes your life easier. We talk about a lot about like how, because we get asked this question pretty regularly, like, okay, there's four of you that own it, like, what do you all do? And so being able, and I think most people, when they find out, like, wait, so you have somebody who owns it who also does all your finances? And I'm like, yeah, Kim, she can use it. She went to school for accounting, like, that's what her passion is, that's what her job was before this, like, that's where she thrives and she excels at it. And they're like, you have no idea how great it is for a small business owner. Who wants to? Who wants to? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so, and, you know, it's it's everything from bothering me about receipts to setting my budget. And four years later, <laughs> do you have oh, a receipt? Shit. No, <laughs> it's in my car. Um, Is it? It's in <laughs> somewhere probably. But it, I think we're very fortunate to be able to have somebody who focuses on that and wants to focus on that and is good at focusing on that. So we're really lucky to have somebody like him uh, to be there to tell us to stop spending money or to tell us we made money here. <laughs> so we're lucky. We're lucky. Yeah. So what do you wish you were better at in business or with business? Oof. A lot of things. I think there's always, always, always room for improvement. Honestly, I wish I was better at everything and I don't have just one specific Continuing to work on, and, and but I mean, I wish I was better at everything, honestly. And people tell me I'm doing a good job, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I, I was gonna say the exact same thing. I wish I was better at my job. Yeah, which it's, it's, which I think is good. I don't think we see this very often, especially in younger adults. Like we're striving to do better. We're yeah. always striving to do better. We always want to do better. Like. Always finding easier, yes, it's better not like, things. oh, two plus two is four. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, it's more than that. Like, you know, you just, what am I doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're, we're always cool. working to yeah. make things better, make the tavern better, make our sales better, make people anywhere here more. Like, these are, make our employees happier. These are all things that we're like, continuously trying to do. And I hope it doesn't stop. I don't plan on it stopping. So, and I will say, like, I love Mark too, but when he left, we got a little crazier with our beer making, and I think Jason's enjoyed it. And yeah. Had, this is our second go that um, we've done a couple different, like, IPAs with uh, more fruity yeah. uh, hops, and it's just been kind of fun. I think yeah. our, our customers have enjoyed it. Yeah. Mark's on board now. We have a slushy machine. Like, <laughs> that's the other thing. We have, that was we have a slushy machine. machine. Yes. Here in the it's right. quiet in here. We turn it off. We turn it off. <laughs> But. No, I think when we first opened, like obviously small town Nebraska, population five thousand people, um, everybody drinks Bush Light. Um, a lot of people here didn't know about craft beer, sure. and so we kept a lot of really easy light beers on tap. And uh, every once in a while, our light beer would disappear. We wouldn't put it directly back on tap, and be like, "Well, I don't have the blonde ale or the wheat ale or the lager, but..." this amber ale or this red ale that you're probably going to enjoy, you know, it's just a little step up, you know, sure. just a small step up. And we call them our gateway beers because it's how we got people in the door and then we're like, try this and they tried it. Um, quite a few of our customers, I could probably name five right off the bat, but they didn't drink anything but light beers. And now all they want are like, IPAs and Imperial Milk Stouts and yeah. you know like this is this is what they want now and so I think we started off with those really easy light beers and now that we've been in the community for so long we've um, got a following we've got our craft beer enthusiasts and we've got our regular beer snobs who come in who 
complain that the golf course only has um, Coors Light, you know, <laughs> like they have to specifically ask for the golf course for um, Kona Big Wave because that's the only craft beer that they can get at the golf course. And so being able to have like those customers now um, it has really been able to kind of let us expand our flavors a little bit more. We've added, since we've opened, we've added um, two more beers on tap. Mm -hmm. We added grape beer or grape and root beer soda. We have a seltzer now that we make and we have, gosh, what, like eight different flavors, 10 different flavors for the seltzer. Um, and then our slushy machine. And so we, plus whatever we have bottled at the time, like right now we have a lemongrass Saison. We just got rid of our Imperial milk stout. Um, we've really been able to expand and provide different beer for people's palates. And you know, I, this Gosa that we're drinking right now is, this is our best seller right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, yeah. it, it's crazy because our lagers and our wheats and our blondes, like those are our best sellers, you know? And then, you know, we slowly start transitioning people in with these super light Gozas and then they explode. People love them. So it turns out people in South Central Nebraska really truly love craft beer. They were just never exposed to it. So we've given them that opportunity to expose them to it and they loved it. Like we had an event last night. What? I forgot what the question was. Oh, I did too. But <laughs> you're going. But we had an event last night called Craft of the Draft and um, it's usually women and last night there were about 20 of them. And when that event first started, the very first event that we did, there was probably about 50 women that showed up. And I thought, you're not gonna drink a lot, we've done shopping events, and you know, we, we don't really sell a ton of beer. These women came out in full force. Like, <laughs> and it wasn't even the light beers or the shandies that we were selling. We were selling, uh, we had wee bit of ale on tap, a Scottish yeah, ale on tap. Yeah. We had a Scottish ale on tap and it was pretty hefty in EBV. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but it was pretty up there. And that was our biggest seller that night. Really? Mm -hmm. And it's it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible to see, you know, stuff like that happen. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, that was our first craft of the draft since yeah. COVID. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, last night was our first craft of the draft since COVID. So yeah, our community is incredible. If anybody from Bullridge is listening, thank you, Bullridge. <laughs> You're wonderful. Yeah, and yeah, like we haven't talked about how great our community yeah. is. You're pretty great. <laughs> That's awesome. So if you could go back to, you can go back as far as before you bought the building, maybe when you were going to look at the other building, or maybe from the day you opened. Is there anything you each can give an answer here? Would you go back and change anything? Or would you just let things go as they have? Would you give, if you could go back and give yourself one piece of advice, would you do it? Or would you just say, no, let's just, just let it go? I think the advice I would probably give myself would be to buy more table and chairs. <laughs> Still telling your no right now. <laughs> <laughs> buy more tables and chairs. Back when Kimberly said yes to everything, I yeah. should have bought more tables and chairs. Um, I constantly feel like we don't have enough seating in here. Like, um, you know, it, it's, it's a great problem to have, sure. but it's still a problem. Um, second thing is buy a building with outdoor space. I yeah. would have bought a building with outdoor space. Those two things are probably the only thing I would tell myself. You would probably tell me something different, but that's fine. <laughs> what would you tell yourself? I think I would have said no a lot sooner. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I think the biggest thing is when you run a family business, I think keeping family and business separate. Sure. I think I, there was one time I had talked to my brother and he was like, this is business, not family, separate. And I think if I had that conversation at the very beginning, things would have been a little bit more different. But honestly, I mean, I love absolutely everything that we've done here. I don't think I really want to change. Like, we've like learned a lot more. We've learned just a lot. Yeah. yeah. Like, and just from that leaning in the basement about, you know, let's do this. like. I mean, that's literally a night I will never forget. Yeah. You know, like, and now we're here. Yeah. So, it's... Cheers, cheers girl. girl. Cheers. We did it. Oh, look at us. You should get in on this, yeah. too. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I like that. You actually said if you like yeah. it. No, no, it's very good. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> that's a great answer. And I think that, um, 
you know, I think that if you would have, what you said about your brother, like, this is business, this is family, uh, I think we need to learn to draw that line. Oh, yeah. And even probably for you two as well. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, like, there, there's probably tension that you individually have to get over, whether if you sleep on it, wake up the next day, you'll realize, okay, you know, we're family, we can move past this. Like, that's just a whole different dynamic that you have to incorporate. Running a small business is stressful enough. Oh, yeah. When you put in the family dynamic, and like family's one thing, but also our spouses. Yeah. So like you have that relationship with Mark where like, okay, let's separate. I'm not talking to you as your brother, I'm talking to you as mm -hmm. business partner. But then we also have like I have that conversation with my husband. I have that conversation with my sister in law. I have that conversation with my brother in law. Like I you know, and all four of us are the same way, you know, we all have those conversations sure. with each other and um, I've told her so many times, like don't forget, at the end of the day, you're still my sister, like, mm -hmm. you know, and we, like I said, we've gotten better, we've learned a lot from it, and yes. honestly, I don't think a lot of people who were in our position or going through what we've gone through would have been able to make it this far, um, but we're a lot stronger than that, we're a lot closer than that, and our business is built better than
from like a blog or something. And so they came in, oh, how long have you been out there? I was like, oh, it'll be four years this year. Four years? How did we miss you? And I'm like, closed down for a while and people would have to drive down this road and there was a group of like hunters that drove down and like, oh my gosh and they would kept going that's a brewery no it's not yes it is turn around like just those you remember stories those? yes they're just like we working that oh, day oh yeah it was amazing like yeah. it's just so much fun and they still come yes they do every single year yep. every single year when they come hunting like it's the most rewarding but at the same time it's, it's hard work it's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard to always be on, to mm -hmm. always, you know, you go to the grocery store where you see everybody you know. Yes. <laughs> and they're like, oh, what's on tap right now? And you're like, oh, well, you have to tell you what's on tap right now, you know? Or um, people calling my cell phone. I'm like, again, my cell phone's out there for everyone, and I, I really truly don't mind at this point anymore. But they'll call my cell phone and be like, hey, where's that beer tent at at this event that you're at? And I'm like, I'm not there, but the beer tent is here. <laughs> like, sure. Um, so always being on, always having to be on, um, it's hard. It takes a toll on you. Um, but you could probably never see yourself doing anything else. I don't, I don't think I ever want to do anything else. Like we both had full-time jobs since opening and we both left our full-time jobs and the, she still have full-time jobs. I mean, little girls. We, I know, we only have like two full-time jobs now, right. not the three full-time jobs yes. that we had previously. Yes. But um, since leaving those jobs, I, I, I mean, I can't speak for you, but the day that I decided that I was going to quit my job, I remember coming in here and I told you about it. And I said, I don't want to be anywhere else. This is where I need to be. Like, I can't be replaced here. I can't. I don't want to be replaced here. Like, this this is us. Yes. We have put so much in this building and I I wouldn't want it any other way. I wouldn't want to be in any other community and I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. Like, this is us. Mm -hmm. I will thank our husbands for keeping those full time jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.